no making fun of my hillbilly setup. So, the next few months, this is gonna be a little goat corner, hillbilly corner. <laughs> Don't knock it, it's coming back down. I just need something temporary to be able to hold them in until babies grow up. Girl's cool, and you're close to the house. How about you think? And you got some cool grass. <laughs> so this is kind of a test run to see if they, <laughs> if they get out. There's no getting out of this. This is a secure wall. My only concern is that corner right there. We're gonna have this little enclosure we made for them, plus the stalls we built. If you haven't seen that video, that's an enjoyable video. We used all salvage materials and build our, their stalls. Looks beautiful. Check that out, that link right here. The best analogy I've ever heard about keeping in goats, if it can hold in water, it'll hold in your goats. So always remember that when you're building something for your enclosure for your goaties. Now, unless you've been living in a bubble for the past year, it doesn't take a genius to realize that the world has been a little bit off balance and a little bit chaotic. Nowadays, people have been more interested than ever at looking at how to provide their own provisions, their own resources. In fact, just this week alone, we have gained 60 subscribers through our Rumble channel. Uh, our last video on YouTube, we gained several subscribers, and along with that, we actually almost had 200 views on our last video that we put out last week. This life is actually becoming more and more appealing to others. Now, if you ask me, the quickest way for a small scale setup to bring in the most amount of meat per year, the one that I think economically and easily you could do, I have one critter that I would definitely add to your homestead. Rabbits. Hey bud, come here, come here. See if they wanna come out and say hello. Got our habits. Isn't that nice? Look at that guy. Now, a lot of your buddies were not exactly part of the plan. We never actually plan on keeping these guys long term. However, they make adorable little critters at your farm. These actually get sold for about $30 a piece, if I remember correctly. And our plan was is actually to sell the raise them or sell them as little bunnies. And we were planning on using that to actually feed our meat source. So these guys were never really part of the platter. So the rabbit breed that we actually have here is California rabbits. We actually have a New Zealand as well on the other side. We'll kind of focus on the Californians today. Californians from birth to prematurity can go to six months and they can get up to about 10 pounds. The turnaround rate, so normally you get a beef cow, you get 400 pounds out of a cow, but two healthy does can actually produce about 600 pounds of meat in a year if you wanted to go that route that was. Now we don't overbreed our rabbits. Uh, we are going to breed every one of them. They're all gonna have a litter. We're gonna have them out here in pasture this coming year, eating off the grass. It's gonna, they're gonna be organically raised meat um, for, our, for our family. Now we'll bring what we can. However, we're very much a plant-based family. So our meat source is not exactly high. We added over 200 pounds of meat this past year alone. We're, we're well stocked up on meat right now. And at this rate, We'll plenty, have plenty of meat to last us into the, the next this coming season. We used uh, some of these little pal, kind of pallet boards to kind of help with blocking the wind, and it's been actually extremely helpful with them because we get a lot of good wind flow through here. So that's why you see these pallet boards up here. You know, California rabbits were actually used for not only for meat because they get really large, but also for their fur. Um, so that's something we might actually look at as well, just to kind of utilize everything so that the life doesn't become a waste. We got 12 cages on this setup right here. We got 12 nice, large size cages. Um, I'll actually post the link somewhere up here showing you how we built this. It's actually an easier way for us to maintain their health, do health checks on them, make sure they you know fed well, watered well, and have plenty of room. And during the spring and the summer and fall, we actually do have, if it's a beautiful day, we actually bring them out and let them kind of get out here in the open. And that is what I would recommend. If you're looking for quick, easy turnaround meat, start with rabbits. Not only is it a compost maker because their, their poo actually makes them for very nutritious cold compost that you can put directly in your garden, they also make for, this is a source of constant producing meat right here. All right, so that brings us to this next episode. I showed you the rabbits, I showed you the housing. Now, you gotta have what we call a nest box. Now, there are plenty of videos out there on nest boxes and how to make them. However, my son here has not made anything of that kind yet, so we're gonna go ahead and give him the opportunity to make and create these nest boxes. This is a metal box 
that we had. So we're gonna go ahead, but we need more of these. Obviously we got more rabbits out there. So we're gonna go ahead and make it out what we have. Now, normally I would prefer the metal because they are not gonna chew it. Um, we're using just some straight salvage wood that we have. Um, just, it's not treated, just pine. They're gonna chew on it, but it's free and it's what we have and it's what we're gonna use. Jack has shown an interest in woodwork, carpentry. He asked for some tools for Christmas, so no point of having tools to sit on the table collecting dust. So we're gonna go ahead and get him using those tools. He's gonna build us one of these out of the salvage materials we have. So we can go ahead and get them ready for little rabbit buddies. We're just gonna go ahead and keep it simple, build a basic, simple box pattern, okay, for them. So we're gonna go about 18. We're gonna go 10, 10 inches wide. We're gonna go eight inches tall by, let's see, five inches here. And we'll go eight inches out here for a nice little covering right here so they can come in. You're gonna want something in the front right here Tends to bunnies will tend to once they get a little older, they start to move around, and as things get moved around, sometimes bunnies get pushed out. And you do not want your bunny little bunnies out on the cold, the cold, because once they get out, sometimes mama puts it back in, sometimes mama doesn't, and you know the last thing you want is dead bunnies. All right, so we were gonna actually call it right here since they already have a screen bottom and side. We figured we'd just put some hay in it and be fine, but mama says she wants a screen bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and screen bottom. It's all done. It's nice and complete. Rabbits will definitely enjoy babies in this. Guaranteed. <laughs> so, but now we must go see if the lady likes it. I will carry it. Go, let's go check and see if she likes it. Here we go. That's really nice, babe. That'll be perfect for the rabbits. We have about Jack three rabbits. No, you didn't. Jack made that. Okay. Good job, dude. That will last for a lot of rabbits. And then we'll cover it in a straw on the bottom. All right, well, you use this as a template, you built this, she was happy, that's what always matters the most. I think it's actually better than you think. Yeah. I would have to say that's definitely better than this. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching. If you're on YouTube, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell to see more of our future adventures and things that we do in the homestead. If you're on Rumble, hit that Rumble and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you here in the next adventure. Ooh.